You're gonna listen to me right now, okay? I haven't slept in four days. In the four days since we captured you, you haven't uttered a word. And I'm gonna get a word out of you before the end of this day, or I swear to God, you're gonna get it. Now I'm gonna ask you this question, you're gonna answer. Where is Osama? Nobody, nobody spits on me! This is what you get. This is what you get. You don't think she's a little young for the hard stuff? Washington says she's a killer. I want to make something clear. We're spending billions of dollars. Welcome everybody to Mothman Jones Reviews. I am John Maffio, and today's featured movie is Zero Dark Thirty. This movie was directed by Catherine Bigelow, who you might have known directed this very substantial movie from 2009 called The Hurt Locker, and this one stars Jessica Chastain, Jason Clark, Joel Edgerton, and Chris Pratt. The plot for Zero Dark Thirty basically chronicles the last 10 years or so for when the manhunt was first established, which is a little bit after 9-11, and then to the very day when he was finally killed in that Pakistani house. But this movie doesn't center around the actual killing of Osama bin Laden, which was in May 2011. This circles around the devotion of one woman who dedicated her whole life in the CIA to find him. This movie basically just shows all the events that lead up to that day and how hard and devoted she was to finding and accomplishing this goal. But she also had a little crew and this includes the likes of the man Jason Clark who if you don't know this actor is starting to get a lot of roles lately and he basically plays the tough as nails strict guy who will basically do anything to get an answer out of you. I think it's safe to say, as far as the acting goes, that everybody gave a good effort. There's a lot of actors, well-known actors in this movie, who have very small minor roles. They're important roles, but they're minor. Following into the anchors, Jason Clark, who plays the tough guy, he really played his role with his emotions very well. And also Jessica Chastain, who I, she definitely deserves an Oscar nomination for Best Actress. She conveyed one of the most strongly prominent female leads all year, and perhaps in the last few years, because... You really see her determination, her devotion. She has a very narrow mindset to get this guy, and she just does. She attempts this for over a decade, and at first she's a little on the laid back side. She doesn't know. She doesn't know what she's doing. Well, she, not that she doesn't know what she's doing, but she isn't keen on the situation. But she grows over the course of the story as this character who just she will stop at nothing to get him, and she will do whatever she has to do. She sells her character very well, and. She basically, along with the events of the movie, she carries this movie with her performance, and it's a testament to her acting. It also doesn't hurt that she's very easy on the eyes. Concerning the actual plot progression and character development, it all happens through a series of events starting from 9-11 to other events like the London bus explosion, the Marriott Hotel explosion. The movie just basically is broken up through those events, and in between there's a lot of dialogue and just plot progression. And I thought this was done very well. Because in between these series of events, you have Maya, the main character, and all the situations where they're trying to get Osama. But the dialogue scenes are done very well. It's very intense at points. There are moments where it kind of got to me and I kind of, you know, I got a little emotional because I'm a New Yorker. And that is a testament, truly, to the directing of Catherine Bigelow. Because she doesn't try to manipulate you into crying or getting emotional. She subtly lets the events unfold. While there are scenes that are very powerful, a lot of the movie is very subtle and on the very low-key side. And it's up to you. If, you. if you are affected by the events, you may end up getting emotional at one point of the movie. Because there is a point where the plot hits its lowest low. And you can't help but get a little down about that. Even though you know how the events unfold, you really get swept up and immersed into the story. And when all the characters hit their lowest, you really feel it. And the opening of this movie, which I won't give away, all I'll say is that it involves 
Holy shit. Now, honestly, unless you were heavily involved in a lot of the situations when you saw this movie, you're not going to know how true to the events this movie is. But judging by the actual movie, I think they very cautiously let the events unfold in a very truthful way. I don't think a lot of it was dramatized or fictional. Most of the movie seemed very on point with what actually occurred. And if you have any ounce of knowledge of modern history within your brain, you will acknowledge and recognize the events that unfold on screen. But Catherine Bigelow manages to surprise you almost four or five times, six times maybe, with these events. This movie commences very abruptly and very violently, and it may take some people a while to get used to that, because the first thing you see is a scene involving 9-11, and then a very, very intense and violent interrogation scene, and some people might be turned off by it. The torture scenes, the interrogations, and the violence. It's very gritty, dark, realistic, and in-your-face at points, and it's very scary and frightening, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Most of the movie is build up for the last act. The whole figment of the execution of Osama was some of the most intense, gripping drama and action I have ever seen all year. I don't think I uttered a breath for 25 minutes or so, because the whole time I was just like this. The ending is not very flashy or very big on action. It's very subtle, and all the investment is just within the audience, and I could hear a pin drop in that theater, and that's a testament, because holy crap, the whole time, it's just slow buildup and so much suspense and intensity, and you can't help, if you're an American, you can't help but feel very emotionally satisfied when the movie's finally over. My only complaints would be that the movie, at first, may be a turn-off, and you may not be fully invested into it until 20 or 30 minutes into the movie, and some people might find it to be a little long. Which, the length, it's two and a half hours, and after I got immersed, I didn't care about the length, but some people might have a problem with the length. Overall, though, Zero Dark Thirty, it wasn't a very obnoxious piece of propaganda, nor is it very nationalistic in terms of a typical national movie, but what it's trying to convey and tell, the story that's trying to be told, was executed very brilliantly, you don't have to see it in theaters, but it is highly recommended that you watch this at some point in your life because this highly affected us as Americans. If the movie had a feeling of self-indulgence or cockiness, I wouldn't recommend this to all Americans, but I really feel like this is a movie that everybody should see. For what it's worth and for what I felt in the experience of the theater, I'm going to give Zero Dark Thirty 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's out right now in New York City and LA, so if you get the chance to see it, well, when you finally get a chance to see it in January, which this video will be up for as long as YouTube exists, so when you see Zero Dark Thirty, let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below. Please subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed this review. Also, check out my Twitter and Facebook accounts on the channel itself. I'm John from Mothman Jones Reviews. It feels very good to be an American right now. For America! See you next time.